It started because a fan of mine in San Diego emailed me a couple of years ago and said, you haven't played in San Diego in a while. You should come. You could play in my living room. And I was like, okay. And she's like, we could ask for donations. It could be fun. So I went down and, and I, I'm like, sure, at least it will be fun and I'll make gas money, you know. <laughs> uh, we went, we had an amazing time. And it was this very connective experience. You know, when you're playing in a venue, there's lights and there's a three-foot stage and there's plenty of opportunities for an audience member to disengage from the music. There's noise at the bar. There's the friend talking to them in the back of the right. room. There's, there's lots of barriers. But in that house in San Diego, I was sitting there with my instrument and I was performing my songs and I could just feel this energy. It was palpable in the room, the connection that I was having with the audience, which is all the reasons why I started doing music to begin with. Right. That's the connection you want to make with people, with your music, right? And so that sparked the idea. Well, we had done, we had booked um, five months of touring on the West Coast, five cities for five months in a row, once a month, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Sacramento, and Los Angeles. And I was going to really build my club presence. That right. was my goal. Right. But we decided to fill in our off nights with house concerts because we didn't want to be sitting idle on the road. If you're not playing, you're paying, right? Right. So, um, so we booked these house concerts to fill in dates around the club tour, the club shows. And over the course of the five months, on every metric, the house concerts were outperforming the club shows. We were making more money. We were making more fans, more people signing up for my email list, selling more merch, mm -hmm. and having a way better time. Like so, this was this was this was how it came about for me. Was that I realized that it was a model that was actually going to help me build a career, and not just say I was playing these clubs in these cities. Because at the end of the day, if you're playing for seven people at the It Club in Seattle, what does that matter? Right. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. What you want is to be building fans and earning money. And the house concerts were doing that for us. And I think that the reason, one of the biggest reasons, is what you referred to in your question, is this intimate, connective experience. Mm -hmm. All those barriers are taken away, right? That, that, that are there in a club. You have music, audience, and nothing in between. So there's so many rich opportunities for engagement with what's going on. Engagement. That's exactly what I was thinking was engagement. And so clearly you made more than just gas money because yeah. a lot of people talk about house concerts, but not a lot of people made $25,000 in two months on a house concert tour. Right. Congratulations Thank on you. that. <laughs> so if I'm a music artist and I want to do a house concert, mm -hmm. what are some of the considerations that I should be aware of when I decide to do a house concert in terms of the size of my house, location of my house? Um, you know, I, I think that the thing, the things that, that an artist wants, and when I set up my house concerts, the considerations that I have, I want a minimum number of people there. So like with all of our hosts, we, we want them to have a minimum number of 20 adults in, in attendance because we do our shows on a donation basis. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a threshold as to like when the money starts making sense is gotcha. in terms of what people contribute. And also it feels like an event. Any, any fewer than 20 people in our experience in a home just kind of feels like a maybe could be potentially awkward. Like you're just kind of hanging out and why is this person playing music next to the fireplace? <laughs> you know, uh, but it feels like a, an actual special event when you get sort of over that threshold. So really... The location of the house doesn't really matter. Okay. I mean, it's really something that just about anybody could do, which is wonderful because okay. it makes it very accessible. It okay. makes it an accessible model for artists to share music with their fans. So if there is a number of people, number of attendees that we want to have, yep. so we're looking at 20, mm -hmm. is that going to be contingent upon how much we charge people? Let's say if we did 10 and we charged $50 for um, 10 people. So now we got a little bit of profit there versus having a higher quantity at a lower admission fee. I mean, what are your, your perspectives on that? So, you know, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. If you, if you were doing a ticket model, you could do it that way. And mm -hmm. if the tickets were worth more and there were fewer people, that would work. In the model that, that I use for my house concerts, we actually don't charge tickets. It's all a donation on donation basis. And the reason for that is twofold. Number one, uh, we want as many people to come as, as want to come. We want it to make it as accessible as possible for hosts to do this. So we don't want there to be this large ticket price that's keeping people out of the doors. You know, If they've got friends that are you know, on lean times and enjoy music, we want them to be there to enjoy the music. That's the bottom line. And if you've made a fan of somebody in a house concert, mm. eventually you'll sell music to them. They'll become a fan and support your career over the long haul, right? Gotcha. The second thing is, is, in the donation model, if, you, if we've told somebody that this show is worth $10 or this show is worth $15, 
that's what they'll pay for it. But in some cases, if you've given them a really like wow experience, which often happens in this really connective and intimate environment of a house concert, if somebody's doing well and they really appreciated that, then they'll drop a 50 <laughs> or they'll, oh, you know what I mean? You. So, so the way that we, the way we don't set a ticket price, we do it on donations because it allows people to express their appreciation in proportion to what they're able to. So let's talk a little bit about the role of the host okay. because uh, you made reference to the host and I think we should really clarify the significance of their role in this. Oh, so significant. What goes in to finding a host or what does one have to do in order to host a house concert? So I think that the most important element of uh, the most important characteristic of a host is that somebody that is a fan or a follower of your music, actually they could just be a fan of you as a person yeah. if that's, if you know, starting off, but you want them to be sort of an evangelist for you because in the model that we use, the host is the, the center of the event. You go to their house, but it's their friends that populate the audience at okay. that concert. Um, so you want it to be a person who is willing to talk to their friends and say, I know this great artist. She's going to come to my living room and put on a concert. It's going to be awesome. You want to come. So we want this person to be a gatherer, an evangelist, an ambassador, really, for you to their friends. Gotcha. Right? So that's the most important thing. Um, and that's important in, in gathering the people there to get the, that, like, you know, um, critical mass of, you know, attendance right. at the show. It's also important when it comes time to solicit donations because we also have our hosts at the end of the performance get up and say, did you think that was as awesome as I did? If you did, here's a donation vase, fill it up. You know, and you want uh -huh. that person to be really enthusiastic about, you know, selling that that speech. And we, we always work with our hosts to help them do that in a really successful yeah, way. Yeah, and, and we know that enthusiasm is contagious. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, so with this host, this person knows you. They're an advocate, they're a promoter. Exactly. They're enthusiastic about who you are and what you do. Um, from a business perspective, administratively speaking, mm -hmm. are there things that you expect and require of them? Are there things that you instruct them to do? Yes. In fact, um, we've done, I think, 150 house concerts in the last two years. So we've had a lot of time. And when I say we, I'm referring to my husband, Jamie. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not the royal we. Right. <laughs> we spend a lot of time thinking about how to hone and sculpt this model to make it the most successful. And so in the process of doing that, we've actually come up with a, we've put together a, a house concert host guide that mm -hmm. we send to all of our prospective hosts. It's like seven pages with pretty pictures. And it's, it's very yeah. specific. Because, you know, what the bottom line is they want, they're inviting you to come to their home and perform for their friends because they support what you do. Mm -hmm. They want it to be a successful event for you, you right. know? So if we can give them the tools to make it successful, that's great, right? And so we were very specific. Here are some very specific things that we need to work out with you to make this a successful event. Okay, Shannon, we've reached the section in our interview where you give me three tips for giving effective house concerts. What are they? Tip number one is you're going to partner with your fans. And by having your fans host concerts in their homes and by having them invite their friends to be the audiences, you can create yourself a new market with every show that you play. Number two, you're going to want to optimize your concert environment. And so to do that, you're going to create conditions for success in the home. For instance, like make sure that everybody has a seat for the performance. You don't want people wandering around. Make sure that there's enough time for guests to get comfortable before the show, but not so much time that the focus of the event gets fuzzy. You want the focus to be on the performance. And then also while you're performing, make sure that there's not going to be any distractions. And the third tip is build long lasting relationships. And this is really thinking long term in terms of your career. But when you put shows on in your fans' homes and when you engage intimately with the people in attendance, you build a far higher quality of fan than at a traditional show. And these fans are the ones that are gonna stick with you and support you throughout the years of your career.